This week on Silver Screen, the Marching Man has its first competition of the year. We take a look at a different type of band. It's Band Books Week, and the STEM kids get wild at the zoo. Good afternoon, Dutch Fork. Today is Friday, September 26th, and your Silver Screen report starts now. The Media Center has a wealth of books, but every now and again, some books are in danger of removal. Band Books Week is a time to enjoy all the reading material that people try to censor. Josh Imholt gets reading. When most people think of censorship, the first thing that comes to their mind isn't their school library. The sad truth is, every year books are challenged and removed from media centers across America for containing material deemed inappropriate. Banned Books Week is um, a celebration throughout the whole United States, um, really kind of hosted by the American Library Association originally, but a lot of other people have joined and a lot of other groups have joined in the past few years. I think it started in 1982 because um, the American Library Association realized people were starting to do a lot of censoring of what was being read in schools and public libraries and decided to draw attention to that fact. What Banned Books Week does is celebrate books that have been challenged due to their content. It is a time for students to overcome censorship barriers and enjoy reading books of any kind. Um, I think it's important because like, censorship is really bad and these banned books are being censored from um, schools and they should be allowed to be read. It's like some of those stories are like real good stories and it's just like really enjoyable. I don't know that it's exactly the schools that try to censor a book. Usually it's a person or a group that has an objection to something that's in a um, library or a reading list or something in a textbook, um, just based on different kinds of um, reasons. Every year more books are challenged, from Harry Potter to Catcher in the Rye. But with Banned Books Week promoting the disadvantages of censorship, everyone can feel assured that their favorite books will stay in libraries for years to come. But, you know, as Americans, we um, have the First Amendment, which gives us a lot of freedoms to do things in America that you can't do in other countries. And so if we censor books, that's taking away one of our intellectual freedoms. This has been Josh Imholt for your Silver Screen Report. For this week's Kids in the Hall, we asked students about their favorite banned books. to say that my favorite band book would be To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee because it's just got such great messages. My favorite band book would have to be the Harry Potter series because they're what I grew up reading and even now going back and reading them. I still enjoy them and there's still new things I didn't notice before. My favorite band book is We All Fall Down. It's very interesting and it's very exciting. It gets you really into the book. My favorite band book is Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck because it's a really easy to read book and it um, you get really attached to the characters emotionally and you get really involved with it. Hey Jacob, did you ever want to spend a night at the zoo? Yeah, that would be cool. Well last Friday STEM student got to experience a night at the zoo. Maddie Mason checks it out. The idea for the zoo was uh, came from a few years back. The zoo offered a bunch of uh, science teachers a chance to go behind the scenes and see some of the staging areas for the animals and veterinary areas and I thought wouldn't that be great if we could work it out for some of our students to get to go see those same places within the zoo. We set up the STEM trip to the zoo. It really is something for fun for our STEM students. They work really really hard um, and it's just a time for them to kind of relax and, and do something that's fun but educational at the same time. We saw different animals that were in like their habitats at the zoo at night. We saw um, like what they, how they store some of the animals and how they take care of them. We got to go behind the scenes um, on some of the different areas. So we got to go behind the scenes on the aquarium and see um, the top of the large tank that they have there. And we also got to go um, to the gorilla exhibit and the aviary. Though I really enjoyed the elephant exhibit and, and being close to the elephants, uh, we actually got to hold a lot of different animals that they brought out to us. And we got to uh, meet the, uh, some native animals like a tortoise. And that was really interesting because we did some selfies 
uh, with some of the some of the interesting animals they brought out for us to handle and pet. It's really fun getting to learn about the animals and see them at different times of day. I think it was a good experience in that anyone in the STEM program, if we have this opportunity again, should definitely do it because it's worth it. I had a great time. I looked forward to it as a biology teacher. I thought it'd be a great experience. And I'm actually glad that some of my kids got the experience because when we do genetics later on this year, we'll put them at a little bit of an advantage. We are constantly looking for ways in the STEM program to expand the student experience and they work so hard in the classroom and we like to come up with additional activities for them to do outside of the classroom that expands their, their, uh, their, the STEM lessons into a context outside of the classroom. This has been Maddie Mason with your Silver Screen Report. The sounds of clarinets, tubas, and drums resonated throughout Pendleton, South Carolina last Saturday. Malik Walker has a recap of the band's first competition under the direction of Paul Clayton. Notes ring out and the crowd cheers as the band takes the field for its first competition of the school year. Although the competition isn't new to the band, it is to director Paul Clayton, who makes his first appearance with the Silver Spirit Marching Band. We were competed in class 3A at Pendleton and we got high, highest music, highest visual, and highest percussion in our class. Really well. We got third overall, which is awesome for first competition. From bonding to acquiring skills, members benefit from the experience. The social aspect of marching band is really fun because you spend basically all day, all week with the people in marching band. It's kind of like family. We've gotten really close to like the friends that I've already have, and we see each other a lot. Marchman's taught me a lot about leadership because I'm participating in the leadership thing, so I've learned a lot about that. I've always liked music and I like being able to make my own and just the social aspect is fun too. Band practices regularly and competes every Saturday. Rain or, or shine, we're out there practicing. I do things from playing, warming up. Um, we've been practicing for a long time now. During two weeks in the summer, we had band camp, which was all every day till eight, from eight to eight. The basics to Marching the show, very demanding mentally and physically for all of us involved. Just making sure things are getting right. This has been Malik Walker with your Silver Screen Report. The SAT word of the week is virtuoso, a noun meaning one who excels in an art or a highly skilled musical performer. Hey Jacob, Wednesdays sure are a popular day for club and organization meetings. They certainly are. One of those clubs is the Literary Magazine. Here's Lacey Jeter with more. Writing, artwork, and design. The Revelations Literary Magazine staff is busy at work once again. The first step is to go through everything that has been submitted, like all the writings and the artworks, and there is a um, rubric that we go through so that we can rate different pieces and we pick what's going to be in the magazine. And then there's a process of matching artworks with writings and what's going to make a good spread and then finally putting the whole book together at the end. I've helped design what the Lit Mac looks like. I've helped come up with ideas for the layout of the Lit Mac and I have also contributed by putting some of my own works in there. I see myself as a facilitator, that's my main job. Just making sure that everybody's on track, we're engaged, we're enjoying ourselves, we're moving forward, we're attending um, conferences, and then constantly promoting, looking for work, talking to people about the Lit Mag. Even though there's lots of work involved in creating the magazine, it's still an enjoyable experience for the staff. I'm really growing to love it. I was kind of just handed it initially and I was very nervous, you know, flapping my arms, how do I do this? But it's just all coming together. I'm learning from the students, I've gone to conferences, and I'm just really enjoying it. My favorite thing about Lit Mag is probably just putting together all the spreads and seeing it come together and finally form that like final book that gets sent off to the printer. The year I actually wasn't in Lit Mag, I got two of my works put into it and it was nice having people who I didn't know come up and talk to me about my writing. Anyone is free to join. I would encourage other people to look at it and realize that it actually exists because most people don't know what it is or what, what we do. Anyone who has a particular interest in writing or any kind of other arts, objects like that, photography, drawing, they can all come together and put all their creations into this magazine for all the student body to enjoy. If you want to join LitMag, just come to our meetings on Wednesday after school. 
Um, we normally stay until around 4.30 and we will accept you with open arms because we need a lot of people. If you want any of your artwork in writing in this year's literary magazine, make sure to send it to dflipmag at gmail.com or stop by Ms. Sheely's room at room 246. This has been Lacey Jeter with your Silver Screen Report. Government students also stay after school on Wednesdays to watch episodes of The West Wing, a TV show depicting life in Washington, D.C. I went to last week's meeting to check it out. West Wing Wednesday is an after-school activity that enhances seniors studying in government and economic classes. I started going to West Wing because, I mean, it was extra credit. You go after school and you watch uh, one of the shows on Netflix, and so it's pretty cool. It ties in with the government, so. Government teachers for years have been using the West Wing to teach um, AP government just because there's there's so much in government that can be difficult to relate to for students and it, it's a lot easier to remember facts and information if you can like turn it into a story. If you've got characters that you can care about and you say, oh, you remember when President Bartley did this or did that. Overall reaction so far has been positive as students all agree on the beneficial aspects. I think West Wing Wednesday has been pretty successful. Um, we've had about 35 students show up each week. I think it's it's pretty, it's not super helpful in like learning and all, but I mean it's like, it sort of keeps you down packed with the information you're learning. My big gauge of the success of West Wing Wednesday will be whether or not students can use the show in class to relate to concepts that we discuss. I'm really hoping that it'll just help get them excited about government and like I said put put a more human face on um, concepts that can seem really abstract. I mean government is about people but teaching about political parties in the abstract can be difficult. This has been Jacob Sprinkle for your Silver Screen Report. And now for some announcements. The first Dutch Fort Community Book Club meeting will be held next Thursday in the Media Center. The club will be discussing Paper Towns by John Green. See Mr. Gilliam in room 204 for more information. Alec is in need of tutors. If you're interested, see Mr. McGee in room 109. PTSO is selling spirit gear on Tuesdays during all lunches. iPad makeup is every Thursday during all lunches. See Mrs. Applin in the media center. The varsity football team hosts the Sumter Gamecocks tonight at home. We'll have highlights from the game on next week's show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Friday. PTSO is selling spirit gear on Tuesdays during... <laughs> Hey Jake, Wednesday is a sure popular day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Media Center has a wealth of books, but every now and again. Oh, oh. Time to enjoy stop, all. Stop, stop, stop. God. I said removal. <laughs> removal. Okay. Bruh. But no, that was fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For this one, like, take your time.